the welcome all. I'm seeing many friends, some of you I'm not sure I do know, since some relatives scattered about. It was uh, good, good to see you all too, because this directly affects you. Uh, the handouts, the first thing I want to do is, is kind of get these out. Uh, they would be appropriate for after the show, but I mean, they're, it'll, it'll be helpful. And Kenny, can you help just? No. Yeah, you can. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't really know how many of them there are there. Yeah, but I can't. These were two handouts also just left over from uh, 1994. One is a, a map of Union Township with cemeteries plotted on it. Now, the other handout has a sim simpler uh, uh, and the other one is just simply na the names and locations of the cemeteries and then the bibliography that my mother used, okay, to actually, you know, work the sources of the information. And not really practicing this, but, uh, you know, kind of going through it, I will not each time say source this, source that type of thing. Bibliography, source, and then as, as things are updated contemporary, I will, I will share that with you. And I'm just going to lay these over here behind you, and you can pick them one up at any time. And outside of the actual addresses and bibliography, what you have in front of you is pretty much uh, pretty much the gist of it. Uh, so, in the handout that Kenny passed out, I hope everyone got one or. Going to share? Okay. Uh, the cover is Union Township, the map, and it, it does the location of the seven cemeteries. Uh, as my mom had pointed out, they're just kind of interesting because for the most part they're in a circle. Baroque kind of slides out there a little bit, but uh, there's basically just a, a, a circle of cemeteries in the townships. Uh, following that are uh, two pages simply of uh, some of the uh, carvings that you see on headstones and, and what, what they would have meant. Uh, I'm not sure that a lot of that is still, uh, pro you don't see too many books on uh, tombstones today. Uh, you don't see too many lambs. It seems like we've gone into the contemporary where they'll actually put a, a scene or a picture on. But in the old township cemeteries, uh, there, there is a great deal of these symbols, and some of them we will point out. Uh, Union Township is approximately uh, seven miles wide and eight miles long, or eight miles north and south. And there, in my mom's presentation, I just want to mention there was one more cemetery. It's actually in Stark County. It's out uh, west of uh, uh, Baroque Cemetery a little bit. And there would be many of the early Union Township families buried there also, okay? And, uh, and you'll see the location of that cemetery on, on the map, but it, is, but it is in Stark County. When you start looking at cemeteries and talking about cemeteries, I would say the main repository of the, the technical operating data lies with the township trustee. And, uh, Former trustee Marlene Mahler, who's here today, uh, I conferred with her on, on, on some things, and we we spent an evening, you know, discussing cemeteries and operation of cemeteries. Uh, so much is on the internet today, and uh, uh, and the last of your handout, there's actually a couple of web pages that I uh, I will show you some examples of where you know it's just I would say it's amazing what you can find out. The township supports all seven cemeteries in some way. Uh, there are private cemeteries, but all cemeteries are either maintained exclusively by the trustee, or there is a small portion, perhaps a, what would be the old pioneer portion or platted portion that one time was township, and there is, in all cases, a contribution made uh, so when you have a cemetery that has its own board maintained, uh, <coughs> Sonic Cemetery, Zion Cemetery, uh, uh, 
they, they do their own maintenance, but the township trustee <coughs> augments that with the fund. And in 2010, uh, the tax dollars going into cemeteries for maintenance, repair, uh, uh, general upkeep was $20,000. Okay? So that gives you an idea what the township spends on these cemeteries. Some of them they maintain it entirely, some is just a contribution to the people that are maintaining them. Uh, and of course, I, the, you know, the big expense is getting them mowed. Uh, many years ago, uh, these, these townships had fallen into disrepair. We, we kind of take it for granted today that most townships or most cemeteries are looking, you know, pretty good. Uh, that has not always been the case. The other thing is that uh, as far as township administration, for someone uh, that is truly indigent, uh, the trustee uh, back in the uh, in 90, uh, early 90s, 93, mandated, or the state mandated, that the trustee would provide $1,000 for funeral and burial, okay? And that amount has been cut to $900. I don't think that's the sequester that was done several years ago. But for basically $900, uh, and, and again, using uh, Marlene as a source, uh, you're primarily talking about cremation. $1,000 just doesn't really do much for a funeral anymore. Cremation. And then the township is required to provide a plot for them. And it is our choosing. So in other words, they don't get to go out and say, I sure like this elm tree, and that's where I want to lay for eternity. Uh, they are usually put in a spot, uh, I don't want to say an isolated spot, but a spot that would not be added to or a miscellaneous spot somewhere, okay? And that is basically free. Uh, well, when I say free, I'm always conscious of being a good Republican, I am. Paid by tax dollars. <laughs> free, free to the people using the service. And, uh, uh, and, and it's not something that you can go in and say, hey, can you help me with 900 bucks? We want to do this. No, it's kind of an all or none type of thing. We, we, the trustee handles the arrangements. Uh, and Jim, do you, have, do you have anything to correct on that or add on that? Okay. Uh, trustee handles the arrangement and, uh, uh, and, and the family basically would attend. Okay. Uh, About how many years? I don't, I don't know of anyone lately. Marlene, can you? I, in, the, in the 12 years that I was trustee, I suppose I had maybe five in okay. 12 years. Yeah. So it sounds like maybe one every couple of years, yeah. And, and I think nowadays there's so, and, and again, you know, families are expected to take, but there are still a lot of people, you know, that do not have family support in any way, so. Uh, quoting from a, uh, from the uh, McDonald book, or from McDonald in the Corbin book, 1934, uh, there was a comment on Union Township cemeteries. It says, in the old cemeteries of Union Township, under the sod and the dew, awaiting the judgment day, repose those warriors of old who defied and conquered the wilderness. Theirs is a little army, their numbers are not great. Theirs is a noble army, laid to rest, duty done, well filled, lives completed. Their attainments were many for so small a band, and much more that they accomplished in their lives after them. May the pioneer cemeteries in which they lie buried remain forever sacred to the memory of those first settlers who carved from the wilderness a land of peace and plenty. May those last resting places of the pioneers never be lost sight of, never fall into decay. May they be restored, if neglected, and maintained and preserved in the years to come. The pioneer cemeteries of the township are, strictly speaking, Bucklew, Washington, Cromley, and the old township cemetery. So of the seven cemeteries, four would have been pioneer cemeteries. Now, one of the things that's caused me a little grief is, what is a pioneer cemetery? And quite frankly, I can find no definition anywhere that explains what a pioneer cemetery is. Uh, from my notes and just kind of many things I've read, I think it's probably the original plots before um, before cemeteries, perhaps family, uh, family would have maintained them. <coughs> they would have uh, 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 kept track of who was there. 
usually there was not formal platting, uh, that, that, which causes some problems, as you'll see later. Uh, and then later on, these have become part of, or, or, or still are pioneer cemeteries, but all these now are maintained either by organizations or by the township trustee. Uh, I want to start with uh, the order, and I'm going to have to figure out how to do this. Uh, we'll start with Bucklew Cemetery. And all the cemeteries, except the one you're going to see, uh, uh, have, uh, well, they all have them. A, a blue sign that has been erected that was paid for by the state. <clears throat> it's just gone up in the last year or so. And this is Bucklew Cemetery. Uh, just kind of a, a, a brief idea. If you go to Miller's for sweet corn, uh, it's a few hundred rods to the west on Quince Road where you go around the corner, the old Smith Farms and through there, if you, if you know where I'm at. But that's, and of course it shows it on the map. Now the other thing, this, this a controversy, or not a controversy, but to me a contradiction is, uh, we see Bucklew Cemetery was established in 1837. And you'll find different dates on when cemeteries were actually established. And for most of them, but not all, most of them, they called the establishment with the first burial. So as soon as someone was buried on the plot, they say, well, a cemetery was established. Most of them weren't actually organized or legally established <coughs> as cemeteries until decades later in the late 1800s, 1890s, and even into the early 1900s, okay? But Buckler Cemetery was established in 1837. And information, signs, and so forth, ultimately, where does that money come from? It comes from DNR, State of Indiana. This is a, just simply a, a Google Earth, very faded. I just put them in, so, you know, for some of them to give you an idea. If you haven't been there, we see uh, several stones, several open spaces. And Bucklew is a closed cemetery. In other words, uh, depending how you define closed, all of the spots are taken. Uh, no new spots would be opened for burial. Uh, if someone is a title holder to a plot, they can be buried there. One of the last people buried there actually swapped some land for a driveway to be buried there and was, and, and was buried there. Uh, and this was just a few years ago. Uh, this is stepping back from the sign. This is the uh, south uh, west corner where the entrance gate would just be to your right, <clears throat> looking up over a knoll. And you can see there are uh, mostly uh, old stones, and a lot of them are very difficult to read. Uh, but blue is also known, and you'll see it a lot of places, uh, as the Bucklew McDonald Cemetery. McDonald was one of the first people uh, buried in the cemetery, and they occupy most of the first row, in case you were not there. One of the things about McDonald stones, most of them contain the weeping willow. Don't know whether that was a family thing or just something that they did. And in your handout, you talk about a tree, but you know, you think of a tree and the roots and the family, and yet, you know, weeping willow, you know. Uh, this was Martha, Martha's wife of Sam McDonald, and can everyone read that? So, you know, uh, and basically, January, uh, died January 1861, uh, which would have been a couple months later than the Civil War started. Okay, to give you an idea how old some of these are. Uh, Mary, wife of Samuel McDonald, again, Weeping Willow. Uh, this one kind of threw me when I first stopped, because you see Lewis, and you think, who was, who was the Lewis family, and so forth. On many of the old stones, their given name, their first name, is the prominent name on the stone. This is Lewis Thompson. If you were driving by on the road, you just think, well, it's someone, family name Lewis is buried there. But this is uh, uh, Lewis Thompson. Uh, again, February 1853, or, and then you, uh, as was common, <clears throat> most of these old stones, they give 
the age in years, months, and days. They've got it right right down when they when they know who would uh, uh, when they were born. This is uh, Nancy Thompson, and Nancy was the daughter of John Lewis, who fought in the Revolutionary War. And you look at a lot of these, you know, at least for me, I remember at church, it's been a year or so ago, I was talking with some of the elderly gentlemen there. I uh, don't put myself quite in that class yet, so I'm getting there. Uh, and asked them, do you know any Civil War veterans? And they thought about it a minute, and they said, well, yes. Uh, there was one over at the old, what was it? I call it the Tanner Place, which is around the corner from Bucklew, and a couple other that they knew, okay? So they, there were people living today, that knew people that had fought in the Civil War. And then I thought, well, then people that fought in the Civil War would have, you know, conceivably known many people who had fought in the Revolutionary War. And I just thought, you know, we haven't been here very long. You know, it's just, uh, we, we're kind of babes in the woods. Uh, I also want to make an acknowledgement, just kind of sliding this in here. Uh, when I was taking a lot of these pictures, I had a spotter, uh, Kim Obermeyer, a friend of mine for a long time, uh, was with me and did a lot of, well, look at this one, well, look at that one. And there is no, I hope if you have 20 stones anywhere, I hope there's no, uh, no disparity in what I picked out. I just kind of picked out interest. Some names I was familiar with, and then it's just kind of moved on. So if you're looking for someone particular and not there, please, please cut me some slack. Uh, here is uh, James uh, uh, Wiley, uh, 1902, and right below where it says Wiley is his uh, outfit in the Civil War. Uh, Mary, daughter of, daughter of D.W. Stoops, okay, and uh, Mary was based, died in 1815, was basically 18 years old. Uh, particularly with the women, you find a great deal of young deaths, when I say young, late teens, early 20s, and they die as a wife. And then at a lot of times, you'll see right near, near them, the second wife, sometimes the third wife, okay. Uh, being a wife was hazardous in the pioneer days. Uh, they, they worked and they worked hard. Uh, just, uh, just, again, just another old stone. Uh, infant, son of, uh, Brooke uh, died in 1881, and uh, again, sometimes infants, you know, they'll list the, the, the days, they'll, they'll, sometimes if they died in the same month, uh, I don't know whether this, this could have been an infant, <coughs> since there are, you know, September 4th, 1881, that could have been his birthday also. I have no idea whether that's the case, but when, a lot of times when you don't see a set of dates, that's, that's probably the case. Uh, again, a Civil War veteran. This was a man of the name of uh, J.T. Bartlett, Company F, 171st Indiana Infantry. Uh, in Civil War and even part, in some World War I, units were organized around states, you know, so uh, when you went to war, when the soldiers in this area went to war, they went with their friends and neighbors in the area. And that wasn't changed until later in World War II because uh, so many small towns just, you know, if they were in the wrong place, wrong time, wrong action, would just simply be decimated of their young men. Uh, but we see, we see a lot of these people uh, that have come back. I had to put in Mr. Bucklew itself, Alfred Bucklew. He died in 1881. And uh, he was 67 years old. This is his, his stone, and it was again the Bucklew McDonald's uh, that uh, that gave a, a lot of the land. Uh, ooh, that's just uh, that's just the bottom of, of the stone that we just looked at. 
Uh, Scheidler, again, uh, or what, over, Orville was buried there in 2004, fairly recent. They would have, you know, someone that would have had title to a plot uh, for a long time. Uh, this is, uh, I just did this to James Duff, and notice at the bottom of that stone, he fought in the War of 1812. Uh, first Regiment of the Pennsylvania Militia. So he had been in the War of 1812. He was from Pennsylvania. At some time came to Indiana and died and was died here. And died and was buried here. Uh, I do not know, but where we see this, if that's old English, I, it says F-I-F-E-R. Uh, I don't know whether that would be like uh, that where it could be a P, where he was like perhaps a piper or something like that Can I suggest in the military. Um, the Duffs came from Fife, okay. which is uh, part of Scotland. Okay. And uh, he may have been a piper. Might have been. Well, that makes more sense. Okay. Being okay. 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 Yeah. <laughs> the next cemetery we'll look at, talk about a few minutes, is the Poplar Grove Cemetery. And established in 1893, and uh, this, you know, again, I'm not sure where that date came from because the the uh, first burial would have been quite a bit earlier than that. Oh, let me uh, uh, in Bucklew, uh, as far as state records, you know, county to the state, they record 151 graves there. Okay, 151. Poplar Grove has 1,070 graves. Now, this is a few years ago. And it says Poplar Grove IOOF Cemetery, established 1893. Actually, the Poplar Grove Cemetery is in three, three parts, okay? If you're familiar with the area, this is on 10. Pear Road is at the bottom of the hill. This would be the Poplar Grove Church, okay? There, at one time, was the old Poplar Grove Cemetery. And as near as I can tell, the cemetery was there before the church was there. Church was on down the hill, and the old Poplar Grove Cemetery would be in here. The old Union Township Cemetery, which has always been not related with the church, is like taking a, a bite out of the cemetery right along State Road 10. Okay? And Always has been township, and now the township makes a contribution to the odd fellas, okay, uh, to maintain the cemetery. It seems like it's the first time you said odd fellas. Did I say Masonic? No. 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 Said odd fellas. Okay. I went out with friends last night, and they beat me up playing cards, and I, <laughs> and I lose it. Uh, and uh, so, it, when you really think of this. You know, it, you know, Poplar Grove Cemetery and so forth, but it's 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 one cemetery now. It is the uh, Odd Fellows Cemetery, uh, and but made up of three old cemeteries: the old Poplar Grove Cemetery, the old Union Township Cemetery, and then the Odd Fellows Cemetery itself. Uh, State Road 10 east of Poplar Grove Cemetery. Poplar Grove Cemetery lies between Pear and Pine Roads, almost touching the Green Township line. The Culver Citizen published an interesting history of this cemetery, June 11, 1908. An election notice for the Poplar Grove Cemetery Association was published May 19, 1883. Five trustees were elected. Some of you might, you know, again, family names. Jacob Boombaugh, William Dillon, Hamilton Hissom, George Wilson, and William Hume. Ten years later, on February 20th, 1893, the Fraternal Order of the Max and Kucky IOOF Lodge, God fellas, took over this cemetery with J.F. Wise, D.W. Marks, and C.J. Loudon, a common name, as the elected trustees. This fraternal order still assumes responsibilities for this cemetery. Okay. Uh, again, just for clarification, the, the trustee makes a contribution monetary support to the Odd Fellows for maintaining the Union Township portion of the cemetery. Okay? 
Uh, once again, the headstones reflect the neighborhood. Loudons, Parkers, Lakes, Voris, Hissong, Thornburg, Lowry, Clifton, Curtis, Norris, Leland, Wickheiser, and Benedict. The headstones date from the middle 1850s to the present time. This cemetery has four Civil War veterans, Henry Smith, 83rd Indiana, Jefferson Hunter, 83rd Indiana, Joseph Pontius, 83rd Indiana, and Joseph, Joseph Vermillion, 12th Indiana Cavalry. And just from Civil War interest I've had over the years, we noticed that three of these, different last names, all from the same area, in the same outfit, and yet Joseph Vermillion was in the 12th Indiana Cavalry. Anyone know why he probably got the Cavalry? He had a horse. <laughs> he had a horse. And, you know, we, we think about logistics and supply and so forth, and lots if you had a horse, okay, you were in the Cavalry. If you didn't have a horse, you were out there walking. Today, this well-kept and much-used cemetery lies behind the Poplar Grove United Methodist Church. A lot of it is behind it is the only cemetery in Union Township that lies beside a church. Okay, a lot of times you see church, church cemeteries, particularly in the Midwest. Uh, in, in Union Township, it is the only one that lies beside the church, that the church is still there. Uh, oops. Uh, this, you know, Poplar Grove Church. Uh, a couple of these pictures to squeeze on the slide, have been, you know, kind of distorted a little bit. The church is not really quite that tall, but it, get, it got it all in from the slide. Standing in front of the church looking east, this would be the view. Uh, the, uh, my family, back to my great-grandparents, are buried there. Uh, on the left of that, a lot of Grovers. The tallest monument in the middle is a uh, uh, Thornburg? Yeah. Thornburg, yeah, I was going to say Thornburg and Wickeyes. This is Thornburg. <laughs> And uh, uh, again, this, this picture has been, been squeezed to get in there. Uh, it would just be like from, from, the, from the obelisk over the hill, you'd have that center section of, of the uh, Old Union Township Cemetery. Uh, just simply my great-grandparents is where I live now. Uh, Wickeyser, Alaski Wickeyser, and uh, uh, you know, again, just you don't see too many stones this way anymore. And notice uh, right below the W, right below the, the uh, orb up top, uh, is the uh, odd fellows symbol. Okay, and you'll see this common on many of the uh, many of the uh, stones. Here was a mason, Bradley, Spangler. Uh, Why was Harriet Bogardus? Garn, Odd Bellows at the, at the top is symbol. Uh, Thornburg again, several Thornburgs. This is perhaps one of the attractions. A lot of times you're going over the hill. If you haven't seen this uh, or noticed it, it's, it's worth a pull off and a look. This is a, a tombstone, and uh, it is inscribed on, it's like a plaque to the right, and it has this inscription there. And I had it written down, and it slid out of my folder, and I'm standing here. I would be able to tell you who that is, and, and I can't. Uh, any idea? No. Okay. Uh, but but again, it's uh, it's 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 quite an attack uh, attraction. Uh, William uh, uh, F. Lewis. And again, William F. would be uh, uh, the family name of the son, son of, and then it's, uh, uh, oh, I'm not sure, whatever, son of Lewis, and died in 19, uh, eight, excuse me, 1837. And on the day she would have been 20 years old, okay? Uh, again, the handshake, very familiar, where you're talking about a younger person or, or a family, again, kind of symbolic, the, the unity of the family, uh, you know, closeness, togetherness in, in the handshake. Uh, James Loudon, again, just simply a, uh, a, a common name in this cemetery. 
uh, John Norris, uh, several Norris, old Max and Cucky Orges, or, Orchards uh, were the Norrises. Uh, Ransom Norris, I believe, is against Norris there. Uh, John, a soldier of uh, 1812 uh, and uh, died in 1847. So you think this guy died several years, uh, more than a decade before the Civil War. Uh, Leonard Wilson is, is, uh, is kind of an uh, interesting one. Uh, he is a, as you can see right below his name, he is a Civil War vet, uh, 1841 and 1919. And he is the owner of where uh, Ed and Becky Furry live now. That was originally his farm. It was passed on to the, uh, uh, kind of in and out to the Benedicts for a while, and now is uh, 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 Eddie and Becky Furries. Uh, most of you, uh, would have some relation to this name is uh, he started the ditch and built the ditch uh, that empties into Lake Max and Cuppy. And that ditch starts on the top of that hill and it is the ditch that goes through the bird sanctuary and empties into Lake Max and Cuppy right at the at the Woodcraft camp, okay, where all those little guys get out here trying to catch frogs. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know again just uh, I've known that name for a long time but just uh, have some old photographs of, uh, of when you know the house was first built. Basically, it's just a house sitting there on a dirt road, you know. And uh, we've certainly come a long way. Uh, Clifton, very very common name uh, at Poplar Grove and that side of the uh, that that area. Uh, Skylar Norris and. Uh, I can't really interpret the symbols up top, but I, I assume they mean something. I don't really know. Uh, uh, again, Civil War here, or not, excuse me, not Civil War. This stone would have been, I'm, I, I'm sure, World War I. I'm not as sure as I can be, it'd be my best guess. Uh, he was born in 1878, died in 1926, so that would put him in the Civil War era. Uh, could have been the Spanish American War, or excuse me. Uh, World War I, or it could have been the uh, uh, Spanish-American War. Uh, I did this one because I, I just thought it was very interesting. You know, it shows the, the, the cap at the top, the unity, it says father and mother. Uh, they did not die at the same time, so I don't know whether one, one post was put up or they put them both together and carved it later, or uh, how it was done, but uh, you know, again, just sort of, just sort of unique. Uh, they, the, uh, the, the year dates for their death are 1891 and 1901. Uh, again, just simply uh, an example of one of the old stones had these uh, finials on top of it. Uh, you don't see too much anymore over the years. They, they do get busted off or uh, get knocked off or storms or limbs or what have you. Okay? Uh, I wanted to mention earlier and forgot, but uh, you know, uh, we often hear about cemetery vandalism, and Union Township has very little of that. Uh, you, you have to really search some people's memories that they can remember when something was damaged, they think, by an individual that was extensive, uh, if you will. Next cemetery we'll look at is. is John, I have a question. Oh, uh, yes. You had mentioned, I believe, uh, in that Google view you had of the mm -hmm. cemetery, that there are like a thousand grave plots there, and it didn't look like there was any ways near that from the picture that showed the headstones. Does that mean those are a lot of unused time, graves, or right? No a lot of times you'll see what? the you'll see the headstones, okay, and then uh, and I can't give I don't know whether I give an example, but they'll have like several of their children scattered out in front of them where, there, where there's just really one headstone and then it's like a, it's in the ground, you know, uh, daughter, infant, that type of thing where it's just a name. So uh, so they were like truly buried in, in a family plot. Uh, the, the graveyards, uh, the plotting back then or in all the Union Township cemeteries was a 16 by 9, okay, which gave you four grave spots per plat, okay? uh, and that 
that's uniform today, and then you know, caskets and vaults are designed to fit inside that. I think uh, uh, some cemeteries, and, and Jim can help me on this, like Plymouth uh, Oak Hill is, has a 40-inch plaque, and, and there's not a lot of them around, but when, they, when there's a burial up there, basically when you dig a grave, you're, you're at the sides of, of, uh, of the two vaults on either side of you. So we have some, you know, there are some extra spaces, and they were, and then on every two or three rows of plats, if you will, then there's a walkway four feet. So, uh, you know, again, a lot of these, you know, surveyed 100, over 100 years ago, 150 years ago, uh, they're off a little bit, so sometimes things have to get moved. Uh, <coughs> yes? I wanted to t mention to you that my great great grandfather. James McGuire's buried out here. Oh, really? And he was in the Civil War. Okay. And he's clear, as you're going east, he's like towards the end, right by the road. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to mention that the VFW or some marvelous people go out every year and put a flag, it makes me want to cry. Yeah, it's, it's a the, flag on his tombstone. Yeah. And the whole place, <clears throat> it has the flags of the veterans. Yeah. And I just think that's amazing they remember the flag. Oh, it, it is. The, the ones, and I say this, <laughs> Respectfully, the ones that make you cry are where you see a flag with a crumpled tombstone that has a, Yes, yes, you know, this is getting almost unbeatable. Where it's, where it's but been it's forgotten over the years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah thank you. Uh, Washington Cemetery, uh, also called the Washington Lawson Cemetery. Uh, the, again, the state records there 274 graves. Uh, it's located on 117 near Mystic Hills. You drive around the lake, you drive right by it. Uh, a call went out February 1st, 1898 for the formation of the Washington Cemetery Association. This meeting was held in the Washington Schoolhouse. Chairman John McDonald called the meeting to order elected trustees. Theodore Klein, William Curtis, and Stephen Edwards, and Scott Foss was the secretary. The cemetery, located on a hill not far from Lake Maxincucky, was a has a good many headstones with burial dates in the 1850s, namely Sapp, Peoples, Lawson, Flagg, McMillan, and Jones. <clears throat> Later we have the rectors, Goheen, Edwards, Craigs, Curtis, Bigley, Manskoy, Klein, Cowan, and South all before 1900. The Washington Neighborhood Cemetery has an area that has just recently been platted by the trustee for future burials. Okay, this is in the 1990s. Uh, it, let, me, let me catch up here. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. We're, sti we're I'm still in the room, okay? Uh, I thought Tom might be here today. This is Tom Curtis's parents. This is his brother, uh, again, still at Poplar Grove. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a lot of new graves, like behind the church, uh, where we still, I believe, are, are some lots for sale. Uh, this is just uh, uh, looking up. This is the uh, back of the cemetery looking towards 10. So this is kind of in the center of the south side. Is that a birdhouse on that one? Yeah, it says a deer mail on it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. And um, Rusty right here is a birdhouse sticking there. And that's the grave. And, and again, as Marlene says, it's air mail. Uh, <laughs> Okay, Washington Cemetery, uh, again, established 1851, what we think is the first burial. Okay, this, this is a view from the top. This is, this is the curve right here at 117, the main gate on the south side. This is the newly platted area out through here. And Marlene, does this include that as far as the newly platted or primarily up here? No, just on your left side. Of the just drive. on the left side. This would be towards, towards the west. But some of it's called near the old, the, the new Culver Airport that was <laughs> new 50 years ago and still remains <laughs> unused. <laughs> uh, 
still still a runway there. But, uh, and uh, just going through uh, again, that's the overhead. And th these are from Google Earth. Okay, so just to give you an idea, this is uh, <coughs> in the uh, uh, south uh, east corner. Uh, you see again familiar names. A lot of big leaves. Okay, uh, Kleins. Overmeyers. You can't hardly get to a cemetery, you don't find some Overmeyer. Uh, Vanskoy, very, very common name in, in Max and Kentucky. Uh, Mike Fiddling and Fiddlings, uh, of course, uh, uh, have stones up, okay? Michael has his stone up, and first wife, his wife, Teresa. Uh, these are uh, the Hudsons, both veterans. Uh, see that okay John Hudson and Helen Hudson uh, uh, both US Army on the one on the right Helen Hudson World War II and on the left John Hudson World War II in Korea okay so people who, who served our country well uh, the rectors were here very very early uh, Lewis Rector uh, Civil War vet uh, County C 48 I don't know what the IVI is. I think Indiana, infantry on the end, I'm not, I don't know what the V would stand for. And many of you old Culbrights will remember uh, uh, Rector's Drugstore, where it stood over here on the, on the vacant lot. Uh, Steve Rector, a, uh, a, a Steve or Stefan? Stefan, yeah. Pharmacist was for pharmacists for 35 years. Uh, I don't remember him very well, but after he was going, uh, Josephine or Joe Rector was there. <clears throat> I would say ruined the, uh, ruled the place with an iron fist. He didn't, uh, he didn't screw with uh, Mrs. Rector. Uh, so I, when I went there to get like uh, Green Rivers and Red Rivers, okay, it was, it was for a nickel. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, Josephine, to me, some people called her Joe, to me it was always Mrs. Rector. <laughs> That's how I was raised, and I always looked over my shoulder. I, I would call her by her first name. My mom and dad were skin. So. Uh, but anyway, and that's on the far west side. Uh, uh, th this, I thought, was interesting. I've never seen it, and maybe someone can explain this to me. Here we have George W. Curtis, and notice how he's identified. He's the husband of Jerusha A. Curtis. <coughs> a lot of times you, you know you see wife of, but I've never seen husband of. So either Jerusha was an awesome force <laughs> or, or, or paid for the stone. <laughs> Even in eternity she went to George to be sure uh, who was who was running the show. But but what's fascinating is it, you know you walk and you see these things and you know, again, it, it just brings questions to mind. What? Why did it happen? And, and, and uh, uh, what was the story? And it might not be any story, you know, but it just could be. Uh, these are, uh, urns, and that little plot is actually a burial site. There's a plaque out front, but, but the urn uh, is, is the monument. Uh, again, Klein, very common name in this cemetery. Okay. Uh, might have turned around, but I'll, let me see. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, the Zion established, the cemetery is established in 1850. Uh, the, again, state lists 343 grave sites there. Uh, this is the one uh, on uh, Upas Road, uh, I call out where, where the Newmans lived for years, in, in kind of the vicinity of the Newman Farms. Uh, 
area is still known, or, you know, by some people, as the Zion neighborhood. The first settlers here were of German uh, descent, and we're going to see a lot of Germans living here and buried in the Zion Cemetery. Same way with the Cromley Cemetery, which I actually thought was my next one. Uh, Zion Church was built in 1872 by Jacob Ezekiel and Charles Stull. Zion Cemetery was located immediately to the north, and Cayley School was built across the road. Is anyone familiar with Cayley School? I'm, I'm not, but uh, uh, so there was, there was a, a school across the road. There is a, a little park with a memorial for the Zion Church, and then the cemetery actually was, was <coughs> north of that. And the original cemetery, again, would have been a pioneer cemetery where the township has, you know, the families, but then turned over to the township and the township maintains that. Uh, Zion actually has a board that maintains their own cemetery, so the township makes a contribution for, to pay for the upkeep of just the old Pioneer Union Township Cemetery. Uh, in 1893, a graveyard committee was appointed to beautify the grounds, making it self-sustaining, establishing permanent corners, platting the ground, and selling lots, okay? So we have a lot of burials before there's actually any platting of ground and selling lots. Brother G.D. Kruger was elected overseer. In 1929, a congregational meeting was held, and an endowment fund was established for perpetual maintenance and upkeep. A portion of the cemetery was set aside for the burial of such as are unable to defray the cost of burial. Among the early burials in Zion are Jacob Stahl, 1874, two Stahl children, 74 and 75, and many dated in the late 1800s. Many familiar names on the, on the headstones in Zion, Romig, Cayley, Milner, Hall, Dittmeyer, Miller, Falstich, Hatton, Ezekiel, Newman, Young O'Connor, Jordan, Mitchell, Wolfram. Uh, there are many recent burials in Zion Cemetery. Uh, a lot of these are simply ancestors of the people who have already been buried there. Uh, an interesting note should be added that in all this time, Zion Cemetery has not been supported by tax money. They still have an active Zion Cemetery Trust. This was what my mother wrote in 1994. They still have an active trust, uh, but like everyone looking for money, they, the township now supports that section that was the old township cemetery, okay? So, uh, Marlene, do you have any idea what kind of money we're talking about here? It's not for, I, I think it was like $800 or $1,000 a yeah, year. For a year, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's, and then, so there, there still is a, a, uh, a Zion uh, committee, if you will, that is in charge of maintaining the cemetery. Uh, okay, we have... Why were the La Paz Lions being It had to do, all I can figure out, it had to do with the grant. So you, you see various, various sponsoring, and a lot of these, a lot of this area was the Paz Lions Club. I don't know whether they... They took responsibility for it, or uh, well, this, is, this just happened in the last year that they. I don't know what spurred them, but I know I got some info about it through paper. They did all of Marshall County. What they did is took on a project to put some uniform signs in all cemeteries in the whole county. This is just in the last year or so. So they don't really do anything with any cemetery. It's just strictly a sign right. project yeah. Yeah. with indot. Nice idea. Or not? Yeah, I mean IB and yeah. Yeah. So I think, you know, basically money was provided for, you know, part, part of the, D, like I say, DNR is in charge of the cemeteries. <clears throat> My guess it came to the, to, to the counties, and then someone in the county took the responsibility, and whoever took the responsibility is going to put your name on it. Yeah. Uh, okay, Zion Cemetery established 1850, which uh, I'm assuming was first grave. Uh, here is simply a, uh, an overhead... Uh, shot, although it, it, that, that's, a, that's an awful picture. Don't know if I put it in there. Here you see Zion Cemetery, which is obviously their sign, 1872, which I'm assuming is when that, when that committee got together, but that is also a little bit of a contradiction of some of the records. Uh, 
this is the cemetery uh, from the road looking west up the hill. It's, it's just simply a big uh, uh, prominent hill that the cemetery is located <coughs> on. Uh, this is uh, some of the stones you see, Newman's, a lot of Newman's out in this area. Uh, old interesting stone, O'Connor, interesting to know the, uh, the history of how that was constructed and why. Uh, here we see Middleton's, Hatton's. This is on top of the hill looking to the west. Uh, this was, see, this one. Uh, I think that was, I just did that again for the, for the style of tombstone. One was just identical to the one in uh, Poplar Grove. Uh, uh, Newman, uh, Levina Wesson uh, was, was a Newman, so uh, many of you probably remember Levina, and her husband was a veterinary here for, for uh, years and years. Uh, John and Sandy Middleton have a stone up out there. Dittmeyer. Uh, this is a, again, one of the infant stones. Uh, it's a stall uh, daughter, uh, not identified uh, by name, but basically August 27th, uh, it was the birthday, November 16th, uh, uh, was, the, was the death in 1891, so it lived a little less than, than three months. Uh, this gets to one of my favorites, or not, uh, not this is not there yet. Uh, John A. Romy, and uh, uh, I looked at the uh, Woodsman of the World Memorial, and never heard of it before, and uh, again, just kind of got curious. In your handout, uh, I think on the third page, uh, it, was a, it was a early fraternal organization back in the 1800s, uh, and uh, uh, it gives, gives a little bit of a history of it, but this was obviously a, a man who had participated in this, and it was important that he, uh, he be identified. Uh, also notice that uh, he and his wife were uh, born in the same year. John died in 1912, and his wife died in 1960. Okay. Uh, don't know anything about Julia, whether she was remarried. You, you know, you just don't know. I suppose she could you know, research and find out, but that stone was put in for that woodsman of the world, just saw something new I'd never seen before. And you got a lot there, so. Uh, again, that also, uh, actually who it is, is a, uh, is a, uh, is a veteran, you see the flag there, and uh, uh, the sign there is Uncle Bud Light, and I, I really apologize because, again, I had it written on a card and it, it, it slid out of my folder and I haven't been able to find it and I didn't get it back out there, but uh, up, up towards the road. So obviously, uh, this, this was a man, uh, I'm going to say, beloved by his family that could uh, uh, get a little bit at the same time. Must, someone must have loved him a whole lot. And, uh, Looks like the last name is Wagner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you, can you see it from there? Okay. Something up Wagner. Okay. Well, Wagner then. Well, more Cheryl, when you asked me to do this, I didn't think people were going to mock my eyesight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm standing on top of it. Can't see it. <laughs> Cromley Cemetery. There actually is a blue sign out front, but it's kind of, I don't say buried in the brush, it's kind of hard to pick out. Uh, established 1844. This was presented by the Marshall County Historic Society in 1995. And some of these cemeteries, you'll actually see, see this uh, plaque that was done by the Marshall County Historical Society, and uh, I just left it out. Uh, this is the one that's kind of hard to find. Uh, this is uh, basically looking at an acre. It's completely surrounded by trees. Uh, if you go 110 extended towards Monterey and start down there and drive slow, it's Old Union Road, which has been closed, but you can see it's just, you just think you're driving back a dirt lane, and in effect you are driving back a dirt lane. 
and you just keep going and eventually you get to this little cemetery that sits on the right. Uh, I can, this cemetery, a lot of these cemeteries in the early part of the 1900s uh, into the mid-1900s were really neglected. Uh, I can remember in 1960, uh, my father was trustee then and uh, had hired my grandfather to, to mow these cemeteries. And, uh, and this one was just particularly, hadn't been maintained in years, so a lot of brush was cleared. And we went out there with two little just push mowers to mow this sucker. And it was memorable because it was just ungodly hot. And when I got home, my mother threw my pants away because the cemetery was loaded with cactus. And all these cemeteries are still sitting in cactus. This was loaded with cactus, and I was kind of like a walking pin cushion from the knees down. Uh, most of this cemetery, uh, again, state lists 51 graves. Most of these, uh, over the years, were in great disrepair. Uh, again, here we see uh, this is. This is not actually a tree over here. There's a major tree that, where the limb blew off and didn't die. But this would be the first row of stones running from the uh, south uh, southwest corner looking north along the west property line. Uh, at one time, there were a, a lot of or a great deal of broken off stones in the cemetery. And I think a lot of them have been reset, I think just, you know, maybe for the idea of just getting them off the ground for preservation. But it also suggested to me that uh, you, you would have to, if, if you didn't really know uh, that there could be a stone there of someone buried in that cemetery, but perhaps it's not right on their grave. Now, that's conjecture on my part. I have no evidence of that whatsoever. But if there was a pile of stones, and my, and my mom makes notion of a pile of stones, uh, I'll, I'll read what she says here in a minute. They're not there now. I, my, guess, my guess is, you know, some of them have been re refit, if you will. Uh, Crowley Cemetery is a pinewood cemetery, but the old headstones are broken, worn, difficult to read, badly weathered, missing. At one time, a road ran past Crowley Cemetery in a one-car lane leading back to the cemetery. Uh, there are two steel beds at the opening of the graveyard to encourage vandalism. Uh, my guess is those, uh, those awful kids in the 50s and 60s, probably a lot of them parked back there. It, <laughs> but you, could, uh, you could sure scare your day if you, if you had to know something. <laughs> this was a German neighborhood. Many of the headstones have German inscriptions. Philip Ezekiel and Samuel Moore, Maurer. Each have headstones reading 1856 as the burial date. Families represented in this cemetery are Cayleys, Morlocks, Eddington, Johnson, Bechtels, Lors, Mowers, Bauman, Reed, McCarty, and Wagner. Uh, Madeline Haig, a pioneer mother, is buried in Crowley Cemetery. This is a small cemetery, and it says with 12 headstones, okay? So back uh, in the as late as the 90s, you could have gone through with 12 headstones. And of course, some, some families will put up a new headstone when the ones deteriorated, they know where the plot is, they, they will do that. Quite, quite a bit of that down here in, in, the, in the Masonic Cemetery. The last headstone dated 1972 was for James McCarty, who wanted to be buried in his family cemetery plot. And that has changed. There is a more recent burial than that. Uh, and this was, uh, this, uh, if, if you look back there, you see the prominent like plot area with the stones around it, this is, this is at rank, and uh, uh, child, if you will. Lois Kelso, uh, former trustee, 70s? 70s? Big 70s. Well, obviously it's not. Uh, I think it was seven, somewhere back in there. Uh, was trustee and uh, and kind of I say had a thing. That, you know, it, it became uh, a place that she desired to be buried, and uh, and so she was. Uh, again, the, the problem is it, it's an acre. There's a lot of spaces out there, but. Uh, it's, 
you don't really know where the graves are. We know where a lot of them are, uh, but a lot of them you don't know where they are. So there's always, uh, this is considered a closed cemetery, okay? Uh, closed cemetery, you'd actually have, again, have, to have, the, have a recorded deed of owning it and it had to be plotted, plotted and you had to know that there is no one there. Uh, somehow Mrs. Kelso got herself out there. And I, to my knowledge, that is the, uh, that is the last burial, and that would have been in 2006. Uh, the next one we'll go to, I'm running late on, I better speed this up. Uh, still at Cromley, this is from the hill to the back of it, looking to the front. More, more Cromley. Uh, at, at the uh, Ezekiel. Uh, Ackerman, and uh, again, a, a, a book here uh, on this. Burrow Cemetery was established in 1834. Uh, again, the the uh, Cemetery uh, uh, has a has sections that uh, are, are old township. Uh, it is a active cemetery still. Uh, it has, uh, down at the bottom right, is a new section that was just opened up a few years ago. And as we'll see, uh, there, are, there are several new graves there. Uh, the old township part has been closed uh, for a long time. Uh, this cemetery at one time had a trust fund also. It turned all of those monies over to the township many years ago. And that is now maintained entirely by the township. And when I say maintain, the trustee contracts someone to mow it and, and do the care. Uh, often this is referred to as the Baroque Voris Cemetery. John M. Voris and Agnes Voris deeded real estate to Baroque Cemetery Association. Trustees John Garn, William Walter, John McFarland, uh, for $4, January 28, 1896. This neighborhood graveyard has been divided into four sections. Oldest section lies to the east, and there are three Civil War veterans buried there. Early legible headstones read Rachel Myers, 1850, Warren Morris, 1851, Mary Garn, 1859, Martha Shaw, 1853. The oldest recorded headstone in, in Baroque is in 1834. Uh, many family plots, Crumb, McDonald, McFarland, Currens, Florian, Boris, Feast, Joseph, Warner, Overmeyer, Heiser, Menser, Osborne, Oakland, Burns, and Shaw. Uh, front gates of Baroque, front gates looking to the east, Overmeyer, a very common name. Heiser. Uh, this is the that new section that was at the bottom. This would be in the uh, southeast corner. Marley is about an acre. Yeah. Yes. It's an acre. It all has been uh, uh, surveyed and platted with, with spikes uh, or, or markers in the ground. Uh, Jane Overmeyer just passed away. This is up in the new section. <coughs> This is from the new section looking uh, northwest uh, towards the road. Uh, again, a lot, a lot of fairly new stones. Forest, familiar name. John Ely, Company G. Again, 184th Pennsylvania Infantry. So sometime came to, to uh, Indiana. Okay. This was the, uh, the cemetery where my mother had the most interest in putting together her, her report. And so a lot of it will be hers, uh, established 1849. Now the interesting part of this is there's actually two markers down there. You'll also see the Culver Masonic Cemetery established in 1859. And both of those signs are on the west driveway. Old Township Cemetery. 
This cemetery is located in the town of Culver, South Main Street, Amarack Road. As you enter the West Drive, it is the first ten rows of graves in the Culver Masonic Cemetery. Now, there are now two drives to the west, so it would be the southwest drive coming in from the west, the first ten rows. George Fall and his wife Margaret deeded this half acre of land to the trustees of Township 32 on December 10, 1849. And it's recorded on page 246 of the record book 7. Okay, this would be up at the recorder's office in South Bend. James Houghton and Ephraim Moore, trustees of Township 32, in consideration of $5, agreed to have and to hold the said premises with all the privileges thereto belonging to them, the said trustees and their successors, so long as the same shall be used and occupied as a public burying ground by the residents of said Township 32. George and Margaret Fall received one square rod in the northwest corner of said Section 32, there is no record of them being buried there, but the limestone marker could be lost. The cemetery is located in a pine grove and all the headstones face west. And if, if you're down in the cemetery, you notice that there's tall pine trees still there today. And it's very, very noticeable. You're going to like a little pine section. Uh, the oldest headstone recorded is that of Benjamin Street, 1859. The old limestone marker has been replaced recently by his family with a granite one. South of his marker are the graves of two Jones children dating 1859. <clears throat> and this, this is primarily, this is what my mother wrote. We now come to my purpose of doing the research on the township cemeteries. I wanted to authenticate what I knew for my family. My interest in the Culver Masonic Cemetery lies immediately east of the Old Township Cemetery. Corwin, in his 1934 One Townships Yesterdays, calls it the Easter Day Plat. I knew it as the Easter Day Graveyard. The plat extends from the Old Township Cemetery east to the end of the cement drive. It has nine plats, nine feet long, running east and west, 12 plats, six on each side of the central drive, that are 16 feet wide. The walks between the plats are four feet wide. This plat, too, is in the pine grove, and the headstones face west. Okay. So <clears throat> this would be the cemetery. These are the two west drives. So coming in this drive here, this area here would be the old township cemetery, the first ten rows. And then going up here, it would be the Easter Day plat. Uh, and quite frankly, uh, I, I, I've got the actual plat to where it actually goes up here. Here the cemetery kind of comes in uh, from the description. This is a cement drive that turns into gravel up here where the cement drive ends, supposedly has been reported, is where the Easter Day plat ends. Okay? And uh, how that was done, I don't, don't know, or how that was determined. In 1880, my grandfather, Opal's grandfather, Benjamin Easterday, came from Bucyrus, Ohio, to join his brother Daniel, who came to Union Township in 1860. Grandfather Benjamin bought the 118-acre farm immediately south of the present cemetery. This land extended from the present Tamarack Road south to Little Lake, east of the Max and Cuckey Outlet, and north, including the present, present Masonic Cemetery, with the exception of the old Township Cemetery. So in other words, this was all the farm that was Benjamin Easter Day, except the old Township Cemetery down in this corner. In, uh, He bought this land from the heirs of, uh, you gotta love this name, Coonrod Hiller, C O O N R O D. I, I can't imagine a kid sitting in a schoolroom today named Coonrod. <laughs> Coonrod Hiller of Marshall County for the sum of $750. In 1886, John Easterday, born in Wittenberg, Germany in 1797, and the father of Daniel and Benjamin came from Ohio to visit his sons in Union Township. At, time, at that time, he platted the Easter Day burial plat and duly recorded the plat in plat book number one, page 
183. Okay, so he just simply, for the Easter days, added on a plat, if you will, east of that. And I'm assuming it's, it's, it's this area. I mean, it is that area. I'm assuming that those are some of the boundaries. Grandfather Benjamin gave each of his five children a plot in the graveyard, namely Frank, Harvey, and Lee Easterday, Laura Easter, Jay Medburn, and Clara Easterday Mikesell. Clara Easterday Mikesell was my grandmother. Claude Michael. <coughs> I have my mother's original receipt that gave her lot 87, signed by Benjamin Easterday and dated June 1st, 1907. Okay. Uh, it's this is actually the original receipt. Uh, Culver, Indiana, June 1st, 07. Received. It says received to Claude Michael. Okay, husband. Two dollars. In full payment for lot number 87, located in the Culver Graveyard, formerly called Marmont Graveyard. Benjamin Easterday signed it. So this was the... Uh, this Why do they charge so much today for a clock then? Who made all that money? <laughs> Afterwards, when there are punch and cookies, you can ask the man behind you. <laughs> I say that for I think, Kenny, the answer to that is, is because they can. <laughs> Everything's gotten more expensive. <laughs> Two maternal uncles, Harvey and Lee with, Lee, with their wives, my aunt Laura Easterday Medburn, husband of two daughters, my mother, Clara Easterday Michael, and my father, and my oldest brother with his wife are buried on their given flats. Okay? And this has been the Easter days. There's many more Michaels uh, that, that have since been buried in the cemetery. Great grandfather was buried in this graveyard with the intentions that the body would be taken to Bucyrus, Ohio in the spring to lie beside his wife, Eva. And this was not done. He is still in, in the cemetery in Culver. My great uncle Daniel with his wife are buried in this same row. My paternal grandparents, Nathan and Rachel Mikesell, are buried in the north section of the East Bay Platte. The Mikesells came to Union Township in 1889 from Fulton County. In 1907, Grandfather Benjamin Easterday sold his farm, with the exception of the Easterday burial plot, to one Susanna Postlewaite, an unmarried woman from Stark County. And that's the way it's officially recorded. Uh, Deed record book 75, page 402. Okay, so it was Postlewaite then that had all of, the, all of this farm ground. And she then uh, later sold that uh, for, for the cemetery to the Masons. Okay. So, so far then we've got, we've got Old Marmont, we've got the Easter Day Flat, and we've got the Postal Way Farm. Okay. In 17, or September 24, 1919, the following article appeared in the Union Township, uh, or, or the Culver Citizen. Okay. And I've got to get this up here to read it. Okay. So it says, Union Township takes over Culver Cemetery. Union Township is now the owner of the pipe title passed last week from Benjamin Easterday and other heirs to the township trustee, whose duty will be to appoint three directors who will have full charge of the work of keeping the cemetery in repair. The expense will come out of the general township fund as provided by law. This action disposes of a problem which has been under discussion for several years. Under the management of the directors, we, we may expect a considerable improvement in the cemetery, which has been a standing reproach to the community. <laughs> Any action which the directors may take will probably be backed up by the people, and furthermore, we may look for a little more pride to be exhibited by lot owners as the general work of improvement becomes visible. <coughs> It sounds like some of my ancestors were slackers <laughs> when it came to maintaining their cemetery plot. Uh, I don't think there's any other way I can interpret that. <laughs> so, uh, September 24th, 1919. So now we have the cemetery that would be the old Culver Cemetery, the Easter Day Flat is one cemetery and still than the Postal Farm. 
1929, Susanna Postlewaite and Mary Wood, my full age, deeded to the trustees of the Henry Culver Lodge, number 617, free and accepted Masons, and to their successors, the land that lay east of the Old Township Cemetery and the Easter Day Flat, the land she had purchased in 1907 from Benjamin Easterday. So, if we look at this, then she first sold off all of this then to the Masons going over to, to, to the current boundary. And then what we see on north of that has, has been subsequently <coughs> purchased by the Masons. In 1937, the Masons added five acres to the north by purchasing land from Robert Nash, G-A-N-G-A-N-S-C-H. In, in 1958, the Masons sold 36 spaces on the south side of the cemetery for the Epley Memorial. This space is owned and maintained by the Epley Trust of the Culver Educational Foundation. The present members of the board uh, of trustees, okay, for the Masonic Cemetery, uh, James Easterday, Edward Easterday, and Don Davis. And of course, this was in 1994. Don Davis is deceased, and uh, I think Edward Easterday is and James Easterday. I think that, that was James Easterday Sr., I'm not really sure. Uh, the township contributes $400 a year for the care of the township cemetery, and that amount is considerably more. Now, Marlene, do you remember what it was? About? Uh, Jim, it's either $1,000 or $1,200. I'm not sure which it is now when $1, I left. $1,000. $1,000, okay. So, you know, again, for, for just the small portion that was the old Marmot Cemetery. Uh, this would be the west gate, so we're looking, you can see the pine trees, this would be the, the old Marmont Cemetery, the old township cemetery. Uh, cement drive, we just saw the north of the drive, this is south of the drive. Uh, Hawks are a familiar name, think of Hawk Lake. This is about the 10th row, where I, somewhere in here is where the, where the old Marmot would have ended. Bogardus, simply, uh, simply an old, old family name. Easter Day. Uh, this would have been part of the original Easter Day flat. This would have been uh, Claire and Claude Meisel. That would have been my grandparents. Claude signed the receipt for $2 for his. And then my mom's oldest brother, Cloral, and his wife, Nellie, are buried next to him. Some of you might remember Nellie Michael was the lady that was shot through her window uh, sitting in her living room a few years ago with the guy who shot the, the, uh, the young, uh, what was the young girl? Donnelly. Donnelly. The young Donnelly girl, okay? And considered unsolved until the guy confessed. So anyway, uh, Osborne's. Again, I think this is on up. You can see, if you look carefully where the cement driveway ends. So I am taking that from that point on to the to the uh, to the left or to the west would have been the old township uh, in Easter Day Platte, which when it was combined, uh, that's the concrete right away looking towards the road. And you notice uh, there's a place where the where the road comes in. The road doesn't come in, but the cemetery comes in and that there might be a link there. I simply didn't have time to, to research all that. Uh, Mr. Osborne and his family, W.O. Epley Memorial. Uh, again, just simply the inscription. And then from that memorial, there again, so, so many stones, and I didn't, I didn't really go out and just try and, and capture stones, most more contemporary. So this orientation is from the Edmund <coughs> Memorial, and, uh, and you're looking uh, uh, east towards the lake, northeast, where you can see there's a lot of space still available, north from the memorial. There's you. Sorry. That's all right. It's Herbie. Uh, north, northwest from the memorial, Western Memorial, and uh, again, some you know, one of the uniqueest cemetery was the old uh, Dave Burns did this did it himself. Dave Burns, a 
a legend, in, I'll say in many ways, <laughs> to, the, to the Clover community. But, uh, and again, you can see where the, where the gravel is, and then cement on, you can't really see it too close. So, and all I got. Now, I do want to share just one more thing with you, if I can. If, if you look at the, uh, at the very back, I have a couple of website, websites, and I did make handouts for these, but uh, the one is, is the Fulco, is Fulton County Library, and they did a project, and I just printed, printed off a page, and this is what you would get at that website. For all Union Township cemeteries, this says McDonald Cemetery, Bucklew Cemetery. It shows the orientation of the plats, the stones, and so forth. Here is row one, list every grave. Row two, list every grave, okay? So these would be all the townships, and, and again, where they generated all this information, I don't know. Imagine from county historical sites and so forth. But is, you know, if you say, well, is so-and-so buried there, this, this could be found, and these are, uh, these are all simply by location, if you will. Who's in the first row, who's in the second row? I put up a, or listed a second site, uh, interesting enough, called findagrave.com. And it lists everything in alphabetical order by cemetery. Uh, you browse cemetery in the U.S. county, and it goes to Marshall County, Union Township, PDF, and so forth. So this would be the Cromley Cemetery, and again, I just printed this out. It lists everyone there alphabetically, so it'd be much easier to find and locate. And then there's simply three pages of the people that are known to be buried in Cromley. Then the last page, you can actually click on one of those names, and this was this Barbara Ackerman that had the, the tombstone with the book on it, and again, it, it, her birth, Date unknown, uh, death 1878, year, so it pulls what information was off of the stone and, and puts it here, okay? And, and again, I've not spent a lot of time on the site, I, and, and this was, uh, 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 and so, and, and you, this is for people to contribute to this site, so old grave, you know, old Uncle Fred's buried there or something, and someone's going to lose track of it, you can look and then citizens can submit this, okay, and photos, or you can ask for, you say, well, there's so-and-so buried there, I can get a photo. Have you used the site? Or? My friend Karen, who's a genealogist, okay. uses this all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, good. Thank you all very much. Hope I haven't put you all some more in. I have one comment to Mimi's comment a little bit ago about the flags that are put out. So that you all know, in uh, Union Township cemeteries, the VFW, the local VFW, puts those out, and your tax dollars, we pay uh, $350 to the VFW every year to purchase those flags, and then they nice. put them out. Which is very nice. touching to see all yeah, They do a great are. job. They, they go out and find where all of them are, and they put them out every year. Mm -hmm. And the Odd Fellows also put out yeah. flags. The Odd Fellows put out there. Yeah, thanks for clarifying that. I, I get paid. Mm -hmm. I, I knew about the VFW, I didn't really know that the Odd Fellows did it for their, so that's, uh, I've forgotten that, so. Also in the Culver Cemetery in the southeast corner is a veterans uh, place there, that the veterans yes. bury there. Oh, yes. Right. yes, yes. Yeah, thank you, I, and I should have mentioned that when, when you're looking east towards the lake, that's down there. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you all very much. Thank you.